Some little bits of wisdom. TED stands for technology, entertainment, and design. Now, I don't know much about design, but I do know about technology. And here's to hoping that you get entertained. You've probably heard this many times before, but change is the only constant in life. These words, attributed to the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus, encapsulate the very essence of our existence. To speak of technological change is to recognize the relentless march of progress, a march that has taken us from the steam engine to the smartphone, from the telegraph to Twitter. Yet, while technological change is inevitable, its outcomes depend on our choices. Technology is revolutionizing every aspect of our lives with a speed that is both exhilarating and unsettling. You know, when you find yourself in the middle of a worldwide pandemic and then somebody just suddenly releases a small artificial intelligence, you probably won't know about it. It was called ChatGPT 3.0. To the horror of English teachers and professors worldwide, it could deem any essay or assignment a two-minute job expertly crafting a beautifully written essay on whatever boring topic your teacher gave you this time. It's what we all love, minimum effort and maximum reward. But more on this later. First, let's talk about your family's favorite dinner table topic, politics. In politics, there are instances where the fervor for change has given rise to demagoguery, division, and the corrosion of our democratic institutions. So for once, let us learn from politics and approach change with both courage and caution, recognizing that true change is not merely about replacing the old with the new, but about nurturing the values of equality, justice, and human dignity. Speaking of politics reminds me of the old adage, politicians and diapers must be changed often, and for the same reason, they both become full of it. And while this is just a funny saying, it underscores the need for constant change to prevent stagnation, whether in our governance or in our digital lives. Early on in my life, I found technology to be the most interesting thing, more than eating dirt and killing ants at least. So I did what all my friends dreaded. I studied voluntarily. But any sudden urges of motivation you might have gotten to learn everything about something can come from only one thing so beautifully concealed behind the walls of our subconscious that we forget it's even there. Curiosity. Every human advancement stems with and ends with curiosity. It is the brick making up the house of change. Think about it. What if no organism was curious enough to walk on land, to breathe air, to make tools? These are the changes that have taken us from being simple fish to fully-fledged humans. And I believe technology is the change that will take us further. But only if we use it correctly. What if the Homo habilis, an early ancestor of us, the Homo sapiens, had used their newfound spears and daggers to kill each other instead of their adversaries? If we fight within ourselves, then nobody wins. This brings me to one of the darker implications of technological change, the realm of war and human rights. There are three major wars going on in the world right now, and technology has made them remote, with drone strikes from thousands of meters away. This raises a moral question. How do we protect human rights? How do we make sure that technology is not used to suppress the very freedom and liberty that it was made to spread? One man saw an apple fall, and the whole world knew the meaning of gravity. But how many bodies must fall for us to know the meaning of humanity? As technology reconfigures how we interact and communicate, we must navigate these changes responsibly. Speaking of interaction and communication, facilitating about 35% of all communication worldwide, and the main culprit for your phone addiction, social media, has given a voice to many, but it has also amplified division and misinformation. Don't think for a second, though, that it is unimportant. The leader of the free world, this man, Joe Biden, announced that he was dropping out of the presidential race, not on national television, but on Twitter. I mean, X. Sorry, Elon. And the backbone of Indian communication, WhatsApp, has connected the world in an almost unfathomable way. Technology even helps us connect the past with the future. From freely providing information, such as the exact date King Henry VIII divorced his fourth wife, to giving us a happy memory when we teach our grandparents how to use their phones. 
Moving on. Alan Turing proposed what we very creatively call the Turing test. It is when a human is made to communicate with an artificial intelligence via text. And if they are fooled into believing that they are communicating with another human, then the test is said to have been passed. It is a benchmark for artificial intelligence advancement. We passed this test for the first time in 2014. That was 10 years ago, and still 60 years after Alan Turing's death. But the AI model that first passed this test was not even close to the types of AI that we have nowadays. But even then, there is something fundamentally robotic about them that just fails to form a human connection with us. Now back to beginnings. ChatGPT, an artificial intelligence that has revolutionized the way that we cheat in online exams. How many of you think that this talk is AI generated? Please raise your hands. Thanks. I put a lot of work into it. Moving on, why do you think you can tell? Is it because we are human? Or is there another limitation? While we all think of AIs as something that can replicate the human mind, this is just not true. ChatGPT cannot think. It's more like supercharged autocomplete, like the one on your phone keyboard. It uses the data it's been trained on, most things on the internet, and just predicts which word should come after the previous word. It's that simple. And you may feel really disheartened that after all this talk of AI, all these years of development, and you can't even think yet, but yet is the highlight of everything that limits us today. We never know what new discovery or invention tomorrow holds. Something that seemed like science fiction could spontaneously become a familiar reality. I mean, look at computer graphics. They've gone from looking like this to looking like this in a span of just 15 years. And we all think of AIs as something so advanced that a company needs a mega large server farm with thousands of computers to run. But this is just not true. Any computer can run Llama 3.2, an AI publicly released by Meta, the Facebook company, offline, for free, and without anybody stealing your data. I have it on my laptop right now. Moving on. One of the co-founders of Intel, which stands for Integrated Electronics, by the way, was Gordon E. Moore. And he proposed what we again very creatively call Moore's Law. It states that computer power will double every two years with a minimum rise in cost. He predicted this in 1965. And if you look at the graph behind me, you can see that it has held scarily true ever since. For example, let's look at one of the biggest tech companies in the world right now. How many of you own an iPhone or a MacBook? I'm about to offend a lot of people. Apple has innovated so much in just the past two years that their phones have gone from looking like this to looking like this. Oh, never mind. But at least the insides of the phones has changed. They've added, you guessed it, artificial intelligence. Oh, wait, that's also releasing next year. I give up. This is a problem that has troubled the world for years, corporate greed. A multi-billion dollar faceless corporation that monetizes anything and everything, slowing down the pace of innovation in the products that we receive while greatly increasing the price. Think about this the next time you upgrade to essentially the same phone, buy the same laptop, or pay for 35 streaming services. These companies have a monopoly on all markets. Most of us will have a Samsung or an Apple phone, use Word to type out our documents, use Gmail for our business communications, WhatsApp to talk to our family and friends, PowerPoint to make this very background visual. The list goes on. My point stands to not help these companies slow down the pace of innovation, to make sure that Moore's Law stands true, to make sure that humanity reaches new heights. In conclusion, let us embrace technological change, not as a mere inevitability, but as an opportunity to build a future for humans that is humane. Let us be the architects of a change that not only reflects the present, but anticipates the future. A change inspired by our hopes and guided by our efforts. Thank you.